Good afternoon. So we're going to demonstrate today how we have some data from GENT in the Ohio DOT GENT format that we can convert to DIGS using the Bentley data conversion tool. And then from there, we're going to use the Data Forensics DIGS conversion service to, to push the data directly into Open Ground. And then we'll look at the logs in GENT and Open Ground and compare and we'll identify some things that we noticed that aren't working exactly the way we would like them to, or some things that may be missing from DIGS. So here we have our GIMP project. Let's preview a log. It has about six boreholes in it currently. We'll just look at the first one for comparison purposes. So pretty standard header information, soil descriptions, SPTs, and values, um, some lab test results, etc. So we'll leave this on the screen because we're going to come back to it momentarily. So let's go to the open ground side. So in open ground, all we have done is we have created a brand new project where we actually input this data and specified coordinate systems and um, things like that. So we know exactly where this is. I think it should actually be Ohio North. Let's go with that. OK, so um, what we're going to be doing is and there's still going to be nothing in this project, so that doesn't really matter, but here we have nothing in open ground. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Bentley data conversion tool to first import the GENT data into Excel. As you can see, we have a lot of templates here. The one we want to use is this O.Master. So data Forensics does a lot of data conversion for a lot of different organizations. We've migrated over 3 million feet of drilling for the Army Corps of Engineers. Quite a bit of data. All right, so step one was get the data into Excel in this data conversion tool. Step two is to click the digs button where we push the data from here into a digs format. So it's writing all this to a digs file. There we see where it wrote it. I'll open that up in Notepad++. Yep, it just updated that file, which is good. It's a digs file. Great. All right. So we have a digs file. Well, what are we going to do with it? That's what a lot of people often say. What are we going to do with that? Well, Data Forensics has created this tool where you can convert digs files from a digs format to something that will run in Open Ground, Gint, or Holdbase. So let's choose that file we just created a couple minutes ago. Let's name it o.example2022. That looks like a good name. And create that file. So what we will see is we just uploaded this file right now. That's great. And we can now either download the file, upload a new file, get a Gint project out of it, uh, get data for Holdbase, or um, data for Open Ground. Fundamentally, the difference between whole base and open ground is there is none other than the open ground variation will push the data directly into open ground cloud. So let's go ahead and do that. So when you click that button, it actually is querying all of your projects in open ground. And so I have a variety of different projects here. It looks like I've got 82 in my particular cloud environment. Um, the one I know I want that I've already created is this 60304 that I created using the O dot configuration that we kind of have a draft O dot whole base configuration set up or open ground configuration set up. So fundamentally, we're now converting it. It's handed that data off to open ground. We gave it to it in a format that it could understand. And it'll take about a minute for it to process this. So I'm going to go ahead and click the view status and sort them based on the start date. And what you'll see is we have this one we just started right here. Looks great. It's in progress. OK, so there we go. It's almost a minute, 58 seconds, it looks like, to be exact. So now we should find that data is present in Open Ground. So if I open up that same project and I reload my data, what we will see is that we now have those six oral locations. And let's zoom on the map and make sure our coordinate conversion worked correctly. There we 
we go. So that's where uh, we've got a few of the boreholes. It's looking promising. It's good. Um, if I want to see what it looks like with the aerial imagery, there we go. So we've got some data that we got into open ground. We've made sure it's mapping correctly, step number one. Step number two, let's generate a log report and we will compare it with what we're going to do in Kent. Let's make it about the same scale and then we can kind of go through and look at the differences. This over there, put that over there, zoom in. Okay, so let's start in the header. Okay, so in the header, we created the project information ourselves, the project name and the project ID, but um, beyond that, you know, the, the dates came across, um, the type came across, the uh, all the data in that second column, the third column. We're missing the calibration date because what we found is that that's not technically in, it's not in open ground. It could be added, but it's not in there by default. Um, it's also not in digs by default. Um, so that would really be, that's mapped in the custom property currently. Uh, coordinates, that all came through. That looks great. Now let's go to the body of the log. Scroll back over. So we've got our soil descriptions. They look slightly different. They're printed slightly differently, but um, fundamentally the description components are all there. Um, we've got top of rock and end of boring that are appearing. We've got our SPT blow counts. We've got our N60s. Um, those actually were calculated based on the hammer efficiency that came across, so that's all working. That's great. Uh, we are missing the recovery. That's one of the things that we posted something in GitHub that we need some guidance on how do we associate those. Um, we thought that they probably should be tied together, but they don't seem to be other than intrinsically by depth. So before we built it, we figured we'd get some confirmation on that. Uh, we've got sample information, pocket pens. Um, now this is an important point. All of this gradation data does exist in open ground, but all of these are actually interpreted values based on your sieve and hydrometer data. So Gint doesn't actually have this data inside the database, therefore it can't be transmitted through digs. Um, the other properties for the Atterberg limits and moisture content are there, um, and we found a problem where we think there's probably a more correct way of writing the ODOT classification in digs compared with what we had been doing. Um, fundamentally, it works the way it is, but we don't think it's as technically correct as it could be. It does work, but... Um, and then lastly, backfill is not something that is in the ODOT GIMP files. It's not something that's digs compatible, so that doesn't come across. But fundamentally, we got about 90% of it there. So that's pretty much it.